Hey, what's going on guys? I'm back with another video and you know the topic of the Nintendo NX and its CPU uh, core processors has been a um, hot topic of debate on the forums and on NeoGAF and things like that. Now, while myself personally, I have thought that the Nintendo NX would use a um, x86 architecture it's not out of the realm of possibility that the NX could use an ARM processor. An ARM processor is something that has been used in the past like on the Wii U and Wii systems to, as like a coprocessor to do like extra functions of the operating system and things like that. However, the advancement in technology for ARM processors in general by AMD has really advanced the technology to make them more efficient all while increasing their performance. Now I've researched these brand new ARM uh, processors that AMD has and the one they released a year ago is called the Cortex A72 and this can be in an 8 core uh, processor form. Now this ARM processor is being used in smartphones and other mobile devices and tablets um, and it actually outperforms I've seen the uh, benchmarks it actually outperforms the CPU in the PlayStation 4 that was used back in 2012 when it was developed the Jaguar uh, CPU architecture that the PlayStation 4 uses is 8 core however the Cortex A72 which came out in 2015 actually outperforms the PlayStation 4 so what's interesting about that is many people think that an ARM processor since it's different than the x86 would make it really difficult for developers to port games in between an x86 architecture to an ARM uh, architecture. Now that's actually not true. What is true is the power and performance of both need to be similar and the, the language of the code uh, these days is being compiled by developers in their own code compilers where they can transfer a code to another code by using a specific compiler that recompiles the, the code in order to run on an ARM processor from an x86 architecture. And they actually have these um, widely in use right now seeing as they're porting games that you know run on iOS and Android onto you know things like Steam for example on your PC they have to use code compilers to do that to recompile the data to run on a PC for example so porting in between ARM and x86 is actually a non-issue many people thought that during the power PC days that porting between the power PC architecture and the x86 architecture was really difficult that actually wasn't quite the case with the Wii U the actual design of the system itself, the motherboard, the um, SOC of the system was designed so differently it didn't have anything to do really that much with the PowerPC architecture. It was the way the system was designed to use the CPU in conjunction with the graphics um, card and the memory and the extra ED RAM that the uh, Wii U had. In order to get the full benefit of the Wii U, developers had to basically make the game tailor-made for the Wii U which didn't port very well to an x86 architecture. Now, with the ARM processors, that's a non-issue since all it is is code recompiling. So if the NX has an ARM processor, the processor could be used on the handheld device and on the NX console, for example, as one chip, like we were kind of discussing before, one chip being disabled uh, part of it disabled while the console version could have it the full chip in operation that's one theory that I have and other people have the same theory too whether or not they would do that it remains to be seen but it would definitely save them money in the long run and they would have a processor that is actually more efficient and has better performance than the PlayStation 4 at a low cost because the PlayStation 4 right now is based on 2012 architecture and is you know, some of the games, I've, as you've noticed over time, are taking a lot on the CPU. There's a lot of data on the screen, there's a lot of things going on in these games, these open world games take a lot of data, 
and you see these stutters and these pauses, it's because the CPU can't draw the information on screen to keep up with the graphics card. The graphics card of the PlayStation 4 is very good for what it is. It's uh, It was a top of the line graphics card for when, it was, when it was released. It's just the CPU is clocked so slowly that you're seeing a lot of these new games have a lot of frame rate issues and, and hitches and slowdown because the CPU simply can't draw the information on screen for the graphics card to fill in. So for the ARM processors that's coming out um, this past year, them being a high performance and being low cost, combining that with the latest in graphics technology um, that the NX could have, along with the newest API, like Vulkan, for example, you could have a, a system that is very power efficient, uh, low profile, but has much better performance than the PlayStation 4. So that's something to look out for. AMD did announce they had some custom design wins as far as x86 and even ARM processing. One was for gaming, another was not for gaming. Now, uh, it's been speculated that these other x86 architectures could be um, for Apple because of one is a server um, based architecture but the, the ARM processor is very interesting because since these are being used in smartphones it starting I'm starting to lean towards more the high performance ARM processor being the, at the core of the Nintendo NX system on chip APU they could have an APU that has an ARM processor and the graphics card could be something um, that's one of the latest from AMD, for example, all on one chip. So uh, that's what I'm looking forward to, to seeing what exactly is the um, processor that the NX is running. I think if it's the ARM processor, it'll make porting games in between um, the NX handheld and the console really seamless. But even if it isn't, and for some reason the ARM processor is just for the handheld and the x86 architecture is for the console, like I said, Porting in between both the handheld and the NX uh, console would not be an, an issue due to the, the code compilation. So that's something to think about, guys. Again, thanks for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon on the next video. Take care.